Mexico City has a high population density, as well as industrial and commercial activities despite having a diameter of around 50 kilometers and limited room for expansion. It accounts for approximately 20% of Mexico's population and 9% of its greenhouse gas emissions, with annual emissions of 60 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. Mexico City's population growth, increased motorization and industrial activity, a constrained basin, and intense solar radiation all contributed to severe air quality problems caused by both primary and secondary pollutants. In this video, we'll take a look at how Mexico City is turning into a green oasis. Mexico City is one of the world's largest megacities, with an estimated 20 million people living on the dried bed of the elevated lake Texcoco and its environs. Mexico City experienced a massive increase in population and urbanized area during the 20th century as it attracted migrants from other parts of the country and industrialization stimulated economic growth. The Automatic Air Quality Monitoring Network, which was established in the late 1980s, revealed high levels of all criteria pollutants, including lead, carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, ozone and particulate matter. Ozone exceeded air quality standards more than 90% of the time and peaked at 300 parts per billion, 40 to 50 days per year, ranking among the worst in the world. Since the mid-1980s, both the Mexican government and the citizens of Mexico City have recognized air pollution as a major environmental and social concern. Aside from air pollution, the Mexico City metropolitan area has an ideal climate, with a cool dry season from November to February, a warm dry season from March to April, and a rainy season from May to October. On any given weekday, the majority of Mexico City's citizens engage in a familiar survival of the fittest routine, commuting in the car-dependent megacity. It's a world of honking, tire-screeching, yelling chilango curses out of sedan windows, and more recently, spotting a few plants among the sea of grey concrete. The Via Verde project aims to turn Mexico City's grey to green by building vertical gardens on columns along the Periferico Highway, which circles the city. The photogenic plants climbing the freeway barriers have been featured in numerous videos in local and international media and are frequently cited as a sign of the polluted city's shifting priorities. A small but vocal group of activists, on the other hand, claims that the government's support for Via Verde demonstrates its willingness to double down on car culture in a city already choked with traffic and smog. They claim that greening the highway is simply making car ownership slightly more pleasant. Almost all of our local pollution and mobility problems in Mexico City can be attributed to the excessive use of private cars. Sergio Adrade Ochoa, public health coordinator for the NGO Liga Petonal, says, We could simply plant trees, but there is a political fear of limiting the city's current car space. In 2016, architect Fernando Ortiz Monasterio of the firm Verde Vertical launched a Change.org petition to gauge public support for Via Verde. The petition specifies specific goals, such as producing enough oxygen for more than 25,000 residents, filtering more than 27,000 tons of harmful gases annually, capturing more than 5,000 kilograms of dust and processing more than 10,000 kilograms of heavy metals. The petition also assured supporters that the project would have a low environmental impact, Vertical garden technology does not jeopardize the structural integrity of a wall and drip irrigation uses rainwater and other non-potable sources. Monasterio's friend, actor Luis Gerardo Mendes, helped publicize the petition, which quickly gathered the 80,000 signatures required to pique the government's interest. Verde Vertical received approval. All of these groups were involved in revising this citizen proposal because it sounded like something that would do Mexico City good, said Miguel Mancera Espinosa, the former head of Mexico City's government. In 2016, Via Verde could change the look of the city while also assisting us in meeting today's most important commitment, the fight against climate change. Verde Vertical considered public opinion when seeking funding. Organizers conducted a survey with three funding options, government funding through taxes, citizens' funding through donations to a public trust, and private funding through corporations. Private funding received nearly 47% of the 2,440 votes cast. Following that, a group of qualified corporations invested the required 300 million pesos. Construction on greening, the 1,000 concrete columns, began later in 2016. And the plants are doing well so far. Monasterio, sitting at his office window overlooking the Via Verde, is pleased with how things have turned out. I'm a capitalist environmentalist, he laughs. 
Others, on the other hand, are less pleased. According to Liga Pietonal, the project has failed to meet its environmental promises. Juan Manuela Berdeja and Sergio Andrade Ochoa reminded residents in a pointed comment, piece on the online news site Animal Politico that improving air quality and combating climate change are not the same thing. While plants are important in combating climate change, using plants to reduce air pollution via phytoremediation is more complicated. Only a few species have the ability to purify the air in the way that the Via Verde petition suggested, and succulents and other plants that Verde prefers due to their low maintenance requirements are not among them. The current Via Verde website makes no mention of local anti-pollution benefits, and Monasterio admits that the project's carbon reduction impact is negligible. According to Roberto Rems of the city's Autoridad del Espacio Publico, meeting greenhouse gas and local emission targets was never the intention. According to one graph, the cost of constructing a single Via Verde column is the same as planting 300 trees. It is a powerful image in a city with a scarcity of green space. While Via Verde is privately funded, the government has enthusiastically supported it. The Liga Pitona is one of several activist groups that believe the project is a gimmick designed to divert attention away from other, less sustainable actions taken by the city recently. There has been a great deal of hypocrisy within the government, Ochoa says. They celebrate Via Verde as the project that will create a garden within the city. Then they cut down over 3,000 trees to build a mixed Choac interchange. But in reality, it's just for show. At the end of the day, it will not change the city. Cancun, Mexico, with its high-rise hotels and crowded beaches, is an environmentalist's tourism nightmare. It would have been easy for the Mexican government to continue profiting from the concrete jungle that lined the coast. But there is a movement in Mexico to consider the long-term environmental impacts of resort development. One of the outcomes has been the development of a sustainable resort town in Huatulco, Oaxaca, where the foliage and brilliantly colored tropical flowers are the focal point. The resorts are almost an afterthought, tucked into the trees and nestled along the beach. With 128 endangered species and several bays, the Bahias de Huatulco is one of Mexico's largest and most diverse ecosystems, covering 29,368 acres. It is now a national park that includes both land and water zones, including large swaths of untouched beaches and overgrown wilderness that creeps right up to the water's edge. 70% of this land is preserved as an ecological reserve, and some of Huatulco's resort area is located within this protected zone. However, anything that is part of the future growth plan is scrutinized and approved only when the government and sustainability are prioritized in the design plans. Modern water and sewage treatment plants are designed to protect the area's water and coastline. The golf course and public parks are watered with grey water, and long-term planning and sustainable infrastructure have allowed for the construction of schools and medical facilities alongside resorts. The government agency in charge of Huatulco's sustainability plan is Fonatur, but many regional and local commissions and committees have been formed to protect and preserve the eco-growth of specific areas in the community, such as the airport, marina, beaches, and golf course. Community outreach programs educate residents about environmental issues while also involving them in beach cleaning, waste separation, battery confinement, and reforestation programs and efforts. Huatulco received a prestigious Green Globe Community Certification in 2006 as a result of everyone's environmental commitments, making it the organization's first tourist destination in the Americas to receive such a designation. For many years, Mexico City has been working to improve air quality through comprehensive air quality management programs based on scientific, technical, social, and political considerations, significant progress has been made in addressing air pollution problems. Nonetheless, the growing urban population and people's desire for a better quality of life create an ongoing need to improve air quality. In addition, the government has taken steps to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The plan's goal is to promote no-regrets policies that are beneficial even if climate change does not occur. The plan also aims to emphasize win-win strategies that promote social development while also providing environmental benefits. And with that being said, it's time to end our video. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos like this. We'll see you with another interesting video.